Pokemon, Lord of the Rings, tomatoes and more. That is what you will find on The Very Worst of Benedict Terry. Click the link below to listen to the album for yourself. Aha! Found it! <laughs> Alright. Yes, it's me, it's Benedict. Pardon the little archaeological dig I have going on down here, but this request takes us all the way back to the year 1915. That's right, the First World War was still going on when this film was released. The request in question is called The Dinosaur and the Missing Link, A Prehistoric Tragedy. Or The Dinosaur and the Baboon, as it was later renamed. Whatever the name, this short stop motion film was the directorial debut of American stop motion pioneer Willis O'Brien, and it was distributed by Conquest Pictures, who were owned by Thomas Edison. Yes, the guy who invented light bulbs, that's Thomas Edison. He also invented motion cameras as well, so that makes sense. As for O'Brien, or Obi, as he was referred to by his friends, he truly was an animation pioneer, as he practically invented stop motion animation as we know it today. Among his more famous works include the short film The Ghosts of Slumber Mountain from 1918 and the 1925 feature film adaptation of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's The Lost World. However, there was one movie he worked on that you all are going to be familiar with. That's right, Willis O'Brien is best known for providing the stop motion effects in the original King Kong from 1933. But for now, we're sticking with where he started off. So, let's dig down and uncover this little artefact of ancient animation history. So as the title cards reveal, a caveman, supposedly called the Duke, is practicing his proposal to the fair Araminta Rockface, who's currently in the drawing room of her country home. Well, that would be fancy for the Stone Age. Then again... A Stone Age family with modern sensibilities. I would say this was a Flintstones ripoff if this didn't predate Hanna-Barbera by at least a few decades. Suddenly, a rival suitor called Stonejaw Steve arrives, and he and the Duke, well, duke it out. Oof, talk about getting the hot seat. While this is going on, our supposed hero, Theophilus Ivoryhead, arrives at the manor. He meets Araminta, who says she'd offer tea, but it hasn't been discovered yet. Pity, really. Now all the suitors come into the Flintstone Manor. The Duke makes his proposal, but Araminta throws his bouquet onto the floor. In floriography, that means I hate you. It is at this point we're introduced to the titular Missing Link, an ape called Wild Willy, the supposed terror of the countryside. Willy comes and raids the pot that's cooking outside. And you thought your neighbours were difficult? Imagine having to deal with King Kong's great great yada 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 grandfather. The ape escapes, and Fred Flintstone tells the suitors that they'll have to hunt for dinner. Because it's the Stone Age and supermarkets haven't been invented yet. So Steve, with a bow and arrow, finds a very feeble looking desert quail. He fires, but the bird ducks and the arrow lands right on Fred Flintstone's arse. Then the quail comes up to Steve and starts chasing him. So much for thrill of the hunt, eh? Meanwhile, Theophilus takes a canoe out onto the stream to fish. Right where a brontosaurus arrives for a drink. Well, there's our titular dinosaur, at last! Meanwhile, Wild Willy is also near the stream trying to catch some snakes. When he sees Littlefoot's tail and mistakes it for a snake. So he hits it with a rock. Well, that's the Darwin Award sorted then. Willy then climbs the brontosaurus and tries to wrestle it. But it doesn't go well, and Theophilus watches as Willy is promptly made extinct. Stupid death, stupid death, hope next time it's not you! <laughs> Theophilus comes ashore and observes Willy's body. When the others come around, he claims to have hunted him. Faker! Well, either way, that's dinner sorted, and everyone lives happily ever after. Except, of course, Willy. So, that was The Dinosaur and the Missing Link, a prehistoric tragedy, or The Dinosaur and the Baboon, or whatever. What do I think? Well, it's always interesting to see the very early days of animation. The story is pretty interesting, as is the humour, such as the juxtaposition of cavemen and snooty upper-class English country house drama. Yes, the animation is pretty jerky, but it's an early demonstration of stop motion, so I can let it slide.
As a directorial debut, this is pretty good, especially with what Willis O'Brien would eventually come up with later on. As for this particular short, I'm going to give it a score of 7 points. If you fancy a glance at some very early stop motion animation, especially from one of the all time legends of the industry, I'd say this one is a fair bet. Well, I suppose you could say this is the Stone Age of animation? Mm. Well, thank you for watching. If you like this, be sure to like and subscribe and. Well, next month is December, so make sure you subscribe so you can get first dibs on my new Christmas special. So, I'll see you then.